If we think back to kind of the classic bevel technique that we use on our class fours and everything like that, we're just going to adapt that now upside down for putting on our class five. So that deep portion of the cavity, we want to create a deep bevel just above that and then have something a little bit more superficial just to help kind of our optical transition into the natural tooth. So if we go ahead and place our little bevels, this time a little bit more gently, class five is a little bit more delicate. Um, and then we can soften that out with our disc as well. Just so we have that nice natural gradient coming through. And then we've got the disc coming through, just softening everything. So when I look at that at all angles, I can see we've got a nice kind of flowing nature to the tooth. We don't have that real sharp junction of a right angle that you sometimes get on these class fives. Um, so we've done a nice little etch everywhere, and then we're coming in to bond and cure, making sure we get really good coverage. Brilliant. And if you're really delicate with that, you won't even have to then isolate the teeth either side. Um, depends how careful you think you can be with, with these next few steps. So really key to use now, I think, uh, are the right kind of tools because we're now working towards the side of the mouth generally and we've got a little less space, but we've really got to make sure that the better we blend this in, because we're working in a slightly different angle, it's going to save us so much time in finishing and polishing. So you really want to get your favorite flat plastics out and the ultimate weapons, that number three brush, because this is an absolute savior when it comes to all types of resin artistry, but especially a class five restoration. It's gonna come in now just with one shade. We're gonna go with the A2 enamel kind of microfill shade. And I'm just gonna manipulate, move that around with my flat plastic. I'm gonna get it probably about 90% of the way there before I refine everything with my number three brush. So already I can see that kind of optical transitions looking really good. But I can now kind of tuck this in, smooth it down onto the tooth. And you can see it's really manipulated in a way that it's pretty much looks perfect before I come on to finishing and polishing. And that is the real trick. It's a little bit of modeling resin and the number three brush creates an absolutely beautiful final end result. Then we come into our usual finishing and polishing is absolutely everything for the longevity of this restoration. Because we have so much more tooth surrounding it, you know, there's less that we can really go wrong here other than massively underbuilding it or massively overbuilding it and having to polish everything back. But I'm still going to follow all the similar principles of getting into the right basic shape, creating some little depressions, softening them out, creating a real high shine and then a real, real kind of ultimate high shine. So if we go through that now, step by step, finishing and polishing, class five restoration. First off, what I'm gonna do is just mark that secondary anatomy. So on a premolar like that, we'll usually have these two depressions, um, just either side of that, that central bit of the tooth coming down. And I'm also just gonna mark a little kind of detail there towards the cervical of the tooth, just so I can see where that curvature of the tooth is. Cause you know, teeth don't come down flat. We kind of have an emergence profile and it flattens off and tapers back in towards the incisor ledge. So once I've got that and I've done an initial little bit of work with the burr, I can use something like the blue cup just to really soften everything off. It's got that nice kind of wide surface area that it affects. Um, and because of that nice curved nature, we can really bring that up, especially on a premolar, um, to really adapt to the top of the tooth. Then use the pink cup in exactly the same way. So while I don't use the cups too much throughout kind of the class fours and or kind of direct veneers, I really tend to use them a lot when it comes to class fives, purely because of the, the shape of the teeth that we're commonly doing in that region. They're just really perfect for the cups. And if you really want to get into the interproximal, you can use something like a cone. Those pink cones are really kind of sharp and delicate that we can kind of get right in there. And you can see that polish is already coming up on that tooth. Uh, we haven't even had to use a disc at all. And I'm bringing that just around the gingival margin pretty pretty happy with the shine already at that stage but a key point now is that 12 blade scalpel just under the gingival margin i'm taking away any flash any excess and you can really just gently scrape and you continually scrape and you keep that slightly angled motion and you'll see it'll catch little bits of dust 
on my blade and you just keep going until that stops. And you know when it stops that so that is gonna be a restoration that is gonna remain beautiful for years and years to come. And then once I've done that, just a little, little hit with the flexi buff. Tiny little bit of enamelized polishing paste and this should come up to be an absolute beast of a shine because we've used that microfill. So you, you can't really even tell which tooth we've treated now because that's, that's how perfect that shine can come up. Oh, this is good fun. This is, this is good dentistry.